If you have a shape or origin, then you may already have workstation and plates, or you may be thinking about picking them up. In my experience, they're super useful additions that extend the applications of origin, especially if you're working with large stock, or if you're like me and don't have access to a gantry CNC yet. However, one small issue with these accessories is what to do with them when they're not in use. They both have a large form factor and don't really lend themselves to going in a drawer. You could leave them on the bench, but if you've got the spare bench space, well, I'm jealous. In small shops in particular, I think one right answer is French cleats. I've designed a set of custom French cleat holders specifically for shape origin accessories, and I wanna show you how to make them and how they work. If you haven't seen any of my previous cleat videos, then all you need to know is that these cleat brackets come in a variety of different shapes, but they all have the same method of attaching to the wall consisting of a cleat hook, as well as a recess for a locking peg. My latest designs are also fully parametric, which means you can completely customize to your cleat setup without needing to know anything about CAD. For workstation and plate, we simply need to cut out a pair of brackets from ply stock. They're fairly small, so you probably have an offcut lying around that will work. If you're using Origin for the cutouts, then simply secure your stock to the spool board, place the bracket SVG, and then do an outside cut. I personally use auto pass with no offset. After cleanup, you'll have brackets like these. Looking closely, you'll notice the workstation bracket has a dowel pin in the top and plate bracket has a threaded insert. To make these cuts, workstation works pretty well. The setup I suggest is to add a spacer piece to the left of the bracket and then after clamping, do a grid including the spacer. Then when placing the cut file, you can offset by the width of your spacer. Switching to inside cut and then helix makes this really easy, but before taking off the clamps, just make sure your pin or insert fits. If not, do a follow-up cut with a negative offset, which will widen the hole. With the workstation brackets ready, we turn over workstation and attach the plate to the back and then the support bar to the front. Then we place our cleat brackets up on the wall in rough position and fit workstation onto one of the brackets. We can now adjust the other bracket so that it fits. Next, carefully lift off workstation so the brackets do not move and fit your locking pegs. These will stop the brackets from moving and you can now store workstation quickly and easily. For plate, you just need to source an M5 thumb screw with a 20 mil top. These screw into the brackets and then it's the same idea of putting these up onto the wall and plate stored away. Okay, so workstation and plate are now taken care of. But what about the other bits that come with workstation? Well, I want to credit Brian J for the initial design on Shaper Hub, which I then remixed to make into a three-piece mortise and tenon assembly. For these pieces, we have a few separate cut operations. I suggest to outside cut the tenon insert first, and with the piece still stuck down to your spore board, follow up with an inside cut and pocket operation to cut these notches to a four millimeter depth. The front of the insert also has holes for magnets. For this, you can use the same workstation operation that we saw earlier. Now move on to the mortise brackets, first doing an inside cut for the mortises and checking fit with the tenons. If you've dialed in your thickness of stock using the parametric files, then you're pretty much guaranteed a perfect fit. Otherwise, you can do an initial cut with a positive offset and then gradually adjust offset to get the tight friction fit. Before doing the outside cuts, helix cut the small hole and then use an inside cut and pocket cut operation for the hexagonal shape to the depth of an M8 nut. You can lastly do the outside cuts. With the three parts ready, you can push fit them together. No glue or any other fixing method is needed. We do however need some CA glue to fix our magnets and the M8 nut. Now we're ready to hang the assembly and fit our parts where we've got space for the support arm brackets, the angle bracket using the M8 nut, the front plate clamps, the long hex wrench, the collet wrench, and of course the shelf, which also gives us a usable shelf up on the cleat wall. Last accessory for today is the mortise jig. Here Shaper have recently released a metal bracket which attaches to the plate for hinge and lock mortising operations. Or you can make up an equivalent bracket like this one, which is based off on the Shaper Hub project. Both work well if you've got a door leaf that needs hardware added. However, you've got the same problem of what do you do with it when it's not in use? Well, with the addition of a pair of brackets and threaded inserts, you can quickly turn the mortise jig into a shelf for the cleat wall. And now we have a few less items cluttering up our shop. If you're thinking, I need these brackets in my shop, well, I've got a few options for you. First, I've added a Shaper Hub project for the four most common cleat sizes. As with all Shaper Hub projects, you're free to use these as you wish. However, if you want to dial in your cut files more accurately, or if you're keen to support my work, then I'm also selling cut file packs for these and a load of other tool holders on my Etsy store. 
Here you get a parametric Fusion 360 file, which you can use with the free hobby version of Fusion, along with 3D and 2D cut files, which are cam ready if you'd rather cut these parts with a gantry CNC. A final option is to join me over on Patreon, where members enjoy additional content, as well as free downloads of all my plans. Now I need to carry on with my Mida Station router table project, which isn't gonna build itself. Thank <music> you.